Yeah, this is what we are. Um, good evening, class. Um, we are starting another um, live class today on practical of uh, project management. Uh, it's a continuation of what we've been doing, but we need to do um, like a practical to give us um, a real life scenario where we can manage our project with one of these um, project management tools we've um, listed. Uh, you people have been doing some practical like um, using VCO to do the work breakdown structure, then transferring the work breakdown structure to the uh, project labor. And now we are going to transfer the, the critical part, which is still the work breakdown structure to JIRA, where you will start the project and start um, managing the project and executing the project and start collaborating with your project team. So that is what we are going to do today. We have a, um, a project, um, a demo project, uh, which are going to be uh, Jankara e-commerce. We're going to see how we can start that project, initiate that project, uh, Jankara e-commerce uh, using Jira. That is what we are going to do today. And this is the um, itemization of how we are going to achieve that. We are going to start from, we are going to go to the browser, log into the Jira, then choose the Jira software. These are the, the rundown of how we are going to, to do it till um, we finish. It's going to be a 50, a 25 items in the list. We are going to follow it one by one till we finish it. And that is what uh, you people, after all this, um, to this class, you will go back on your own and repeat the tax on your own. And uh, you screenshot it and upload them to your um, user account in the Facebook group. And then I'll go there to, to review our work. So that is what we are going to do. So we need to, um, to pay attention so that you learn how to go to the JIRA and do your, your practical. Now, the first thing we need to do is to go to the browser and log into JIRA. And if we don't have JIRA, then we sign, it, we sign up. So that is the thing we are going to start doing now. Now this is our browser. So we have to start, we have to go to the JIRA and what we need to do is to uh, type Jira on the browser, Jira software. That is Jira software and you bring us to this uh, Jira software. Yeah, this is Jira software. So if you, if you have account, you go to account and log in. If you don't have account, what you need to do is get a free account. Yeah, but because of the fact that I've got an account already, what I will do is um, to log into my account. So 
I've logged into my account now. And as you can see, Atlantian is a very big company. Jira is one of their, their software. They have so many softwares like Trello, Confluence, Jira Service, so many of them. But what we are going to, to use is a Jira software. Jira software, in case if you are logging and you get confused, you don't know where to start or which um, software to use. What you need to use is Jira software. So that is it. I have two projects already here, but if I don't have any projects here, will look blank. So what we need to do is to, now we have logged in, we need to create a project. We need to create this project I've just mentioned, Jankara e-commerce. Now, you'll be prompted to select um, the kind of um, development you want. How do you want it? And on this note, we are going to use the Agile Scrum, not just Kanban. We are going to manage it uh, in a Scrum way. It's going to be Scrum. So we need to choose um, Scrum. And here is going to ask us um, um, whether I want to use a, a template, Scrum template. We we'll say yes. We use root template to clear here. Um, use template. Now we have choose um, the Scrum template. Now it's going to ask us how do we man want to to manage the project? Choose, choose the project type. Is it going to be company managed or is it going to be uh, team managed? You are going to use team managed because company managed is, uh, is not free. So we use team managed. Click on team managed. Then at this point, we'll be prompted to name, give our project a name, which I will give it a name now as a project. Jankara e-commerce. So and you can look at here, key is giving up PJE, means Project Jankara e-commerce, because you might, um, in your own project, you might see something like this, you might not understand. It's a short form of this uh, PJE project. So that's, that's what I mean here. So you, you need to click here. If you have some document from the maybe repository where you've been working, maybe if you are working, uh, your team has been working uh, using a Basecamp or using a Microsoft uh, Office. If you need to be uh, bringing some documents or code or maybe uh, uh, any other, so you need to, to click in order to be getting documents to connect this um, application with your uh, third party um, softwares kind of, this is a kind of integration. And when you do that, you click next. Now, your project has been created successfully. You look down here, you say project, Jira project, um, successfully created. So the next thing you have to do is go to your project. And this is our project board. See, that is our project. So, like um, 
when I was telling you people that um, Kanban is a technique uh, that uh, you can incorporate it in so many projects. You know, some, some people used to call it uh, a methodology, but it's not a methodology because you can incorporate it in so many uh, methodology. This is a agile scrum methodology, but you can see we are using Scamba. So it's a technique that you can incorporate in so many um, methodologies. So this is our board where we'll be uh, managing our projects um, when we start the project. This is where we'll be putting all the uh, uh, tasks. We call it a backlog, product, uh, project or product backlog. Backlog is, it, is the same thing with uh, schedule or tasks. So this is um, in progress. This is where we'll be seeing all the um, tasks or backlogs or user stories. So when you are hearing backlogs, user story. A backlog is a collection of uh, user stories. User stories are tasks that need to be done. So a collection of like three user stories or four user stories or five user stories is called product backlog. So, or you can call it product backlogs, backlog items. So whichever name you hear, don't be confused. You see the same thing. And when you finish your, your work, this is where your work will appear um, called done. And here, if you need to create more board, you can create more board. So it's flexible. So in this process, we need to create one more board. So we create one more board here and we call it testing. We need to test our, our work before we put it to done. And you see all this, um, this uh, board, you can move it around. So how do we do now? We move it here, move the board here. So, and that's, so you can see from to do, that is our backlog, what we should do to do. You are the project manager. You are going to be scheduling all these activities. You schedule it here and move it here. From here, after testing, done. And that is it for that particular user story. So what do we need to do now? We have not started anything. We, are just, uh, we have just come into the project environment. We've not done anything. So we have to start to uh, hit the road and start planning our project. And the, next, the first thing we need to do is to create a roadmap for our project. You need to plan your project. So, what is roadmap? Roadmap is a breakdown structure. You need to break it down. Like from what you've been doing before, you see uh, initiates, you see um, define, uh, you see execute, and these are stages. These are roadmap sequence of how you plan to manage this project or achieve this project aim. So with that is the first thing we need to create. So we'll go to uh, the left, you can see my cursor um, uh, to the roadmap, I'll click on roadmap and then we'll start creating our roadmap. So the roadmap here is epic. If, if you are in a business analysis, you hear a lot, of, a lot about epic list, epic list. Epic is a category which is still um, like, um, like I said, uh, initiate is a category of project delivery. That is the first stage. Then define is another stage. Then execute is another stage. Then closure is another stage. So the first epic in the roadmap or the first category in the roadmap is going to be initiate. So what we are basically doing is transferring what we have in our project labor 
or from our um, work breakdown structure, which is a sketch because we cannot work on that work break. It's just a, 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 a guide to help you plan the project. Now you have planned it and it looks good. Now you have to start transferring it to the work environment where the real work will start because you cannot do the work on um, Lucy chart or you cannot do the work using a project labor. It's just a, a, a tool to help you plan your project before you bring it here. This is the final plate where you'll be working on your project. And from here, you go and demonstrate your product. And then that after then you close there. So this is what we are doing now. So this is where the main thing will start uh, happening. And continuously, even if you get a job in a company, this is how you are going to be doing it. It's the best practice for now. Although it must not be in JIRA, but the JIRA for now is the most accepted tool for delivering um, this kind of projects. So, but you can do it in so many, like you can use monday.com, you can use Asana. So, so don't be confused if you start doing it in an, another place that is not JIRA. So, but we are using JIRA because JIRA is more, um, is free and is more sophisticated. So we've created the um, initiate, enter, we create um, define, enter, we create execute, enter, we create closure. Yeah, this is going to be our epic. <laughs> this is how our project is going to be, uh, how we plan it till we close our project. That is the epic. We have created, we have mapped out our epic. So you must not, one thing you, I want to address now, the epic must not be only initiate, define and closure. It depends on how, on the kind of projects you are working on. So Epic here in another project might be another thing. It might be, so, but on this particular project we have been working on, because I want us to just use um, this work breakdown structure we'll be using, a that framework to continue with that till here so that you won't get confused. So it's like similar, the same thing, because even if another project will be working, that's how you have, you have to start planning your project. So now we have created the epic, call it epic list. The next thing is to create our project tasks or user story. And we need to do that in the backlog area. So that is what we are going to do now. Um, we go to a backlog. So if you, if you come here, you can see the backlog is um, empty. There is nothing here. So, and this is where we are going to create it. In Jira, Jira call it uh, issue. So. Here you see create issue. Issue is a problem or a task or user story. So what we need to do now is to um, start creating our issue. And uh, the first thing, if you are looking at um, the the project labor, the first thing there under our task, which is uh, under um, initiate, is um, receive project mandate. Yes. So, so um,
receive project mandate. That is, that is the first thing there. The second thing is assemble project team. Created. The third thing is um, define rules and responsibilities. The next thing is define project scope. The next thing is select project methodology. The next thing is identify stakeholders and expectation. Please mute yourself. The next thing is facilitate uh, requirement gathering. And the next thing is um, requirement analysis. And then business case. And that is um, well, no, the, the, the task we are going to uh, be working with um, so far. So now we have um, created our user stories or the task. We now have um, a product backlog here in our JIRA. Then the next thing is to start assigning um, EPIC to the user stories. 
you saw this user stories they don't have um, a category they belong to so we have to start assigning it, each of them to categories which is a uh, epic so what we need to do is to We we'll click each user story, and then we we'll work on the user story. Like now, you see, we've clicked the receive project mandate, and this uh, uh, dialog box here opened up. And then, what we need to do here is to assign um, assign this a uh, user story an epic. So you can see here. Add epic. You can look at it here. Add epic. And I'll click on it. And you break down all the epics I have here. And you can see we have a closure, we have execute, we have define, but this, all these user stories belong to initiate stage. So I'll, I'll assign it here. And you can look at it here. It has appeared. And that is what we are going to do to all of them. So we keep doing it until we finish all of them. All of them belongs to initiate stage. So that's what we'll be doing until finish. Yeah. Sorted. You can see it is now sorted. We've assigned um, Epic to our user stories. Then the next thing we have to do is uh, assign a story point to every user story. Story point who is a point like from one to 10, which grade each um, user story or each task based on how difficult it is. So, and it's going to be like from one to 10 points. 10 points is the, the most difficult. And the, uh, um, one is the least difficult. So that's how we are going to start arranging our work so that the developers will know which one is harder and which one and the amount of time to apportion to every user story. If it's a work that is harder, they might just take one work per day and concentrate on that work because it's very hard. But if it's like work that is not hard, very simple, they can take like four or five tasks and work on that a day. That is how to manage it. So you, do, you don't do it alone. While assigning story points, you have to work with the developers because it's not you, the project manager, that is going to do the work. Your own is to plan and organize. But there that have the, the technical knowledge to do the job, we tell you how difficult it is. So you have to work with them to give uh, this thing a point. So, but we'll just be adding points, you know, just to keep working because um, we don't have a developers 
uh, working with us. So uh, what I will do is that I will just be adding this number one. Uh, let me say receive a um, project mandate. I will, I will add, look at where you add the estimates, the story points here. So I will just add uh, five. This one, I will just add um, assemble project team, let me say six. Defines, define rules and responsibilities, which you will use a um, racing matrix um, to help you to do that. Let me say seven. Um, define project scope. Yeah, this one is going to be a bit um, difficult. Yeah, you need to involve a lot of technical analysis. So I'll see. It. And then select methodology. I'll say five. And uh, identify stakeholders' expectation. Because you know, stakeholders are difficult at times to manage, but if you study them very well, they are very, you understand them very well. So let me say um, seven. Managing stakeholders is very, very important. So, and then facilitate requirement gathering. Let me say eight. And the requirement analysis. Uh, I'll give it nine. And then business case. Uh, that is uh, bringing everything together. I'll give it 10. Yeah, good. Now you can see our, our project is taking shape. Now, we have uh, 65 story points to tackle. That is the amount of work we need to do to finish this uh, project. We call it story points. So now we've um, sorted our story points. We've known the, 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 the amount of work we have. And um, the next thing is now to assign all these um, tasks to team members. You know, is this is if, if we have uh, other team members, the time we are doing um, uh, the fine rules or the assemble team, what we need to do, we have to assign. All, uh, add all our team members. Like if we are then working on this project, this is where we are going to add people, add people here. So, but for now, I'm the only one working on this um, project. So I will assign everything to myself. Oh. Assign it, assign me from here. That's the person you are going to assign it to. And the person is going to report to me. So 
I will assign it to myself and I will report to myself. So assign it to me. So you can see somebody is now owning the, res the, the responsibilities. I now have the ownership of this um, um, user story or this user or this task. So continue to do, do more. I'll keep assigning till I finish assigning the who to before we start. We can't start until finish assigning this uh, task to people who will know who is doing what. You can even do it later because see here, you can plan, but this is how at times I want to plan. Or you can finish, you can even wait till when you finish. Uh, um, planning your, um, your sprint, and then we start assigning. So, but we've assigned. So, at times you don't need to assign. So allow the developers to choose whatever they want to, whichever one they feel that they want to start with. Not you, the project manager that's going to assign it to developers. But you have to watch and see them uh, take the one they feel they have to start with. You know, that's how we assign it um, to people who they be believe um, should do this one, or that's that's why why we call it a, a cross-functional team. So everybody you choose in Scrum, we don't have um, a leader. Everybody is one. If you're working in a school environment, everybody is one. You don't say maybe I'm the project manager who work as a team. So the only thing is that the school master, the duty is to be there. That's called it a servant leader. So he's even more of a servant, not a leader. So everybody is equal. So you don't raise your shoulder that you are the project manager or they are the school. So everybody is equal. So you don't have to assign um, job to anybody in Scrum. But I, I like easy, I'm doing here, I'm assigning, I, I'm just choosing the one I feel I can do. So that's how Scrum works. So I've assigned this and then after assigning to, to team members, then the next thing we need to do is uh, uh, prioritize the, the product uh, backlog. Prioritizing product backlog is to put uh, which one you feel that is the more important, the first one that should be done. You know, you see now I've um, brought receive project project mandates down, but all of us knows that um, receiving project mandates should come before um, assemble project team. All I just want to show you is here that you can you can move it around, and that is what you should do now. Prioritize um, your, your backlog or your task in the order of uh, importance or in a sequence, how the under, order of uh, dependencies, how it comes, which one comes first, which one should be done before the next one. So what we need to do is uh, project, uh, receive project mandate 
should be the first one because you need to understand what you are doing before you, even you start uh, assembling your team. So I'll take it back. So, and I will leave it the way it is. I'm happy the way my project is. It's already prioritized from the, the beginning. So uh, that one sorted. So the next thing I have to do is to move uh, the, um, these are user stories. To, to the sprint area where we are going to do the work. Uh, but before we do that, let us go to our road map and see how it's looking. We'll go back to our road map. You see our road map here. Uh, under this epic list, click here so you see that all that appear under each um, epic. You see? Now you can see that all these things, has, you see all of them, they are now under the initiate stage. So even if, if you add some of the tasks under this um, defined stage, they will all appear there. So everything is working fine. So we have to move to the next stage. What we are going to do now from our product backlog is to start selecting work and start moving them to the um, sprint area. This is the sprint area. You see here, you see some people working here. That is a work environment. That's where we, we plan our sprints, do our sprint meeting, organize our sprint, um, look at it, everything very well, and then we start work. But before we do that, we need to move um, user stories, which is the task to here. So I first move this one. You see the drag and drop. I drag this one again. I drag this one again. I drag this one again. So that's what we have. Um, I think we can move everything. We can move everything to. Can finish everything in one sprint. So, well, let's just do this once. Let's, let's just do the job in two sprints. A sprint is the amount of time, a period of time you take us to finish what we have selected. This job we have selected is our sprint. Mainly sprint uh, is uh, within one month, within two weeks to one month. So that's what is sprint. The, the, the work, the duration will take us to finish the work we've selected before we can start selecting another work. So we've uh, selected um, all these ones based on the um, sprint point, it starts eight. So we still have uh, 27. So that's what we need to do now. So now we have moved our work to the sprint area. What we need to do is to give the sprints a name. And this is where you can give the sprint name. Well, I'm happy with the name. 
sprint one. Good. Then um after giving it name we, we now we are calling it sprint one the name is there is i'm okay with the name so we have to add date and then um, time see under this dialog box we need to add date and time so we are starting this work immediately. So, and uh, I'm happy with the, uh, let's look. First, duration is going to be two weeks. We select two weeks, we need to do this work in two weeks. And then date and time, today is 10th. Let just let to this date. So let today, and uh, I'm happy with the time. We are because we're already working on it. Already we started. So now we give it a goal. What are we trying to achieve? The goal should be to initiate Project Jankara. That is our goal. To in Project Jankara, so sorted, and uh, we click. So that is it. With uh, if you look at here, as uh, Project Jankara e-commerce print one starts on 10th of uh, March and ends in a, on the 24th of March. You can see it here. So that is, so we have started. And what do we do now? We come here and click start. Why is it not starting? Yeah. The work have started. So you can see here, you see sprint started. So we've, um, taking you to your team sprint board. Good luck team. So here yeah, we've started our work. So as you can see, we have moved from roadmap to backlog. From backlog, we, are, we created a backlog and then start uh, plan our sprints. And then on the board, on our Kanban board, where we can now start the work proper. The work has started. So no wasting of time. And within this period of time, these two weeks, we are going to do this work. Every day, each member of our team uh, will come and tell us what he's been doing on, uh, what he's going to work on, and the challenges um, he's been facing during his work. So that is what will be happening every day for a period of two weeks we'll be doing it so what are we doing now okay i'm my i'm a team of my own i'm working alone so i have to uh, start from this to-do list you can see to-do list 
Let me start selecting something I have to start doing today. I move this. I need to receive my, my project mandate first. I need to assemble my team. I need to um, define rules and responsibilities. So that is what I'm starting with. And I, uh, I'm starting immediately. So let's see it. So this is the, um, the receive project mandate. Yeah, I have received it and I've gone through it and I quite understand it is very good. So um, let me just make a comment that I've received it. Uh, projects. <clears throat> Mandates receive received. Yeah, project man they received. So I've done that and uh, yeah, let me put happy emoji to show that please, I'm happy. Yeah, good, I've done this one. Yeah, and I've, I'm done with this um, task. So I move it here. The tester will test it. To make sure that uh, I actually received the project mandate and I've gone through it and uh, uh, everything is in order. After the testing done, good. The tester have gone. Let's tester will go through it. Yeah, receive the project mandate. We've gone through the project mandate. Made comments. Everything is okay. Good, then sorted, done. I finished this task. And then I will pick another one. Yeah, assemble uh, project team, done. I've finished this work. I'm not, I'm not slacking. Test. Everything okay. Sorted. Meet the requirements. I've gone through it. It meets the the, um, the acceptance criteria uh, to receive in order to, to assemble a team. I use my racing matrix. I plotted all the 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 graph. Everything. The racing matrix. Everything sorted. Good. And then done. So as I'm working, my work is moving fast. So I'm bringing more from to do and adding it to the um, uh, in progress. So define roles and responsibilities. Yes, still need my racing matrix. Everybody need to do what they are doing. Sorted. Sorted, everybody know their work. Good, good. Yeah. My work is uh, moving, so I'm very happy. Yeah. So 
Esther, over to you. So that is it. That is how my job is progressing. And that is um, how um, to manage a project using um, Jira. So now that our work is moving, everything is, we need to uh, look at, um, let us monitor the statistics of our work. Yeah, need to monitor the statistics, see how things are. And you look at, I go to the insights. Let me see how I'm moving. Yeah, you can see from here, 29% uh, done. So I'm just, I'm moving fast. Within now I've started, I've gone this far. I've, you know, let us look at it in details. What I've done, I've done 29%, 39 in progress, and uh, 32 not started. I'm not doing badly. So that is it. Okay, let me look at my graph. And um, see how my graph looks like. Yeah, that is my burn down chart. You can see in uh, this is a job that is supposed to be in. Um, uh, we need to do this job within two weeks. What the bond down chart is telling me is that this is the how far I've covered already. And I have all this place that is not shaded is the amount of days or work I need to do. That's what I have from here to here. That's what I have. So I still have a lot of days, you know but I'm moving fast. So that is how all these things work. Let's look at the remaining work. Yeah. Percentage. This is, this is it. So that is um, how it is, okay, let's look at the epic progress. Let's look at the epic progress. On our epic, you can see we're still in initiate and the initiate is um, green. So it's um, moving and in progress and to do, so this is how our peak looks like. And that's how you get the insight um, using dashboard and statistics to monitor the progress of your project. And that is it for, for now. Then we need to um, gather our reports you know, how far we've gone. So we need to start from this um, epic. I need to, to show what I've done today. So I need to screenshot it. And to screenshot, like I said, is, um, Window Shift S. I'll screenshot this and I'll have to save it now. Save it.
Jankara one. Save it, close it. Then I'll go to my backlog. Yeah, that is my backlog. That's how it's looking for now. I will screenshot window shift S. I will I'll save it. Jankara. Two. I'll close. Then we'll go to our board. Window shift S. I'll save. Jankara three. And that's it. We are done. So that is it with um for now. Can we, I can just finish off the whole thing, but this is what I want to show you people. So you know you can just keep adding uh from to do to moving from one stage to another to finish everything and then you come back to to this thing so yeah when you finish the sprint then like now you come to this sprint now you see this one we have uh, done all this done area you can see done here done here testing in progress so you see it has um Rule this one, PG E5, done, ruled. PG E6, done, ruled. So that is it. You look at it here. From here, from backlog, you can see what is happening here. And this is the one that you have not, you have not even started. You have not moved them to the, you have not planned it. It's not sprint yet. So I want to finish this one, then you come back to this one and continue. You know, this is a, a two weeks project. So, but for today, I'm finished. I've finished my work for today. So, if you come here from the, you can see the same thing we are seeing from the other angle. That's what we are seeing here. And that's it. Our job is moving. So, that is where we are. This is what I have achieved today. I've received the project. Um, Mandate sorted, I've sorted out, uh, I've assembled my team, and there uh, I've started, uh, I've um, defined rules and responsibilities, and um, that is uh, what I've, uh, uh, I've done, is still going through testing. And uh, what I'm working on now is to define the project scope. So if every morning, like for instance, tomorrow morning, if I want to continue with this project during my, my uh, daily standup, what I will do, I have to give uh, you people a brief of what I've done. Like um, I've uh, selected all these things. Uh, what I've done, I've uh, uh, received my mandates, assembled my team, I have uh, defined rules and responsibilities, although it's still going through testing, but I've done that. I've, um, I'm working on defining the project scoop. And for now, um, I don't have uh, any issue. Or for instance, if I have issue, if I'm uh, having issues trying to define this scope, let me see. 
to show you people that I have issues, there is problem in this uh, defining this uh, scope. What I have to do is to, I need to flag off the red, um, this thing here. I flagged it off. I have a problem here. So the problem I have here is that uh, I'm trying to meet with my stakeholder that cannot see my stakeholder. So that is a, a red flag here. So when the stake, uh, the scrum master comes and see a red flag, the scrum master will just call me or approach me. Hey, Mr. Charles Ugu, uh, the, this, what is the problem? I can see you are flagging off a red flag. What is this? What is the situation? I will tell the scrum master, I've been trying to meet uh, the project uh, sponsor in order to define the scope of this uh, project and I can meet him. Can you help me to, to get his attention? It's okay, no problem. And this uh, scrum master will call the scrum, the, 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 the sponsor, Mr. Charles, the business analyst has been trying to get your attention to define the project scope. Please, can you give him attention? So, because he's now becoming a blocker. Okay, the 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 for this this uh, project sponsor. Also, okay, I'll make our time, and the project sponsor maybe will call me and we we'll schedule a date and we we'll meet and we we'll sort it out. And then I'm happy now. I've uh, I've, I've had a meeting with him and we've sorted out that. So. And now it's sorted out, I have to remove the flag. You know, I have to remove the flag. Everything's working. I move it to testing. That's it. Then I have to look at the methodology. We need to, we are going to use Scrum to do this. So now all this on the test, testing is done. Yeah, done the testing. This one is still undergoing testing, and that's it. So that is how we do this. You can see it's not a rocket science. Just for you to be organized, just practice it, and everything will be fine. So that is it for um, tonight's class. What you need to do is all this, I'll see put it down in a paper. You go to Jira, sign up, and uh, from the project labor, uh, plan um, the this in the way I just um, carry out this assignment, um, this activity. Plan the initiation stage of this project in a Jira, just like the way I I plan this one. Screenshots the roadmap. Roadmap, you have to click so that I will see all the things we've done. How you see how this one is looking. When you screenshot the roadmap, then you screenshot the backlog, then you screenshot the task board. And that is going to be your, your homework for, that is going to be your homework, your assignment, your third assignment. So you see how many minutes uh, it takes it takes us approximately um, 10 minutes. Yeah, is it there? Yeah, no, it takes us, we started many hours, but just like um, one hour, uh, let's say one hour to do this. So, and that is, um, very good. I can see two people are raising their hands and I will stop sharing my screen so that I can answer these questions. Okay, I will start from Chinon to Mweke. Please unmute yourself and um, Come up with uh, what you want. She not say okay. Yeah, can you see Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, sir. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, yeah, good evening. 
so uh, yes, I have a, just a, a little clarification. Maybe, maybe I want to understand more. Uh, okay. Said, uh, the at the stage of uh, testing, at the yeah. stage where the user story gets to testing. Yes. How long the project, the user story stays in the testing board or in the testing board before moving it down to the to the uh, done uh, stage. That is number one. Then okay. second, yeah. Se the, secondly, the the who is in charge of the testing stage of the project? Is it the project manager or the, the does the project manager assign a team member to be in charge of the the testing stage of the project? Thank you, sir. Okay. The the testing has no amount or no duration. It is the tester that will decide. So it takes, the tester decide how much, but tester need to do it as soon as possible. You know, everything I've assigned to have a story point on how difficult it is. So as soon as the tester, the tester can be a business analyst. The project manager is not a, it's only if the project manager is working on a hybrid capacity. Hybrid capacity is that as a project manager, you are a developer and you are a business analyst, or you are a, like I am now, as all of you know, I'm a business analyst as well, and I'm a developer. So I can work as a business analyst. So I can be a tester, I can be a developer, and I can be a project manager. I can work, so I can do all these things. But the project manager's role is not to test. If he started testing, he's not testing under the capacity of a project manager. He's testing under the capacity of a tester or a business analyst because a business analyst can test. So, and he doesn't have an amount of time. So it's as soon as you finish your testing, then you move. Okay, 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 sir. Yeah. All right, sir. But if, if during the testing and you find out that it doesn't pass the test. Then you call the attention of the developer, you know, to, re, to, to we call it a regression testing. When after testing and it doesn't pass, you call it, then you go back to do the job again and fix whatever the bug you find out during the testing. And once the bug is um, fixed, then you can pass it and then you move to done. And we use... Uh, uh, requirement traceability, uh, traceability metrics to manage this um, requirement, which shows how the testing and everything, the, how the requirement is, is done. So all those testing is the test you need to plan um, before the work start. Like uh, you need to create test cases, test plan, test scenario. We have not reached all those areas. And it's not, it's not in this course that I'm going to teach people about testing. Because testing is not a project management um, course. Testing is under business analysis. So that's why we're not talking about it. But I just have to clarify because you asked the question. All right, thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Um, Chineye Ade, Ade Bulu, Ade Bulu, sorry for the long, <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the long sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I'm sorry for modeling your name. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Even me, I model it sometimes. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I had two questions earlier, but the last guy had just from answering his own question, I another question came up for me. So let me start with that. Okay. Please. So is it possible that a team member can wear more than one hat at the same time in one project? You can you understand what I'm asking, sir? Yes, I've just asked answered that question. Like you are now a hybrid um, business okay. analyst and project manager. Okay. So you as, as, as a hybrid in this project, you can see me. I'm doing the job of a developer and the job of a business analyst and the job of a scrum master. 
is um, is allowed. But which one you are doing, you are not doing it. If you are doing the job, we know the job of a business analyst, the role of a business analyst. So if, when you start meddling with the role of a business analyst, then you know you are working as a business analyst. And then let that role be signed to you. You're undertaking okay. that role as a business mm -hmm. analyst, not mm -hmm. as a scrum master or as a project manager. Okay. So in a small project, even one, mm -hmm. one person can do everything. Okay. In a, in a small project. And it will still be acceptable. Yeah, it's accept the management. No, you are they not the person that employed you to do a hybrid job for them? Okay, sir. Now yeah. another question I wanted to ask: When we are going through the, I, I, I can't remember now which area. I think the backlog where you itemize the under under initiate exact under initiate. Okay. You have the epic, epic list. Yes, sorry, the epic list. I saw that um, uh, the defining the scope came, uh, the project scope came after uh, assembling team. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was thinking that uh, you would have, this, you know, you would have defined your scope before you now assemble team. I mean, that's my own thinking. So I just wanted to throw more light on that uh, sequence. No, you have to assemble your project team because all of you are going to work as a team to look at the scope and then define your scope. But it's left for you, you, you as a project manager or as a business analyst to use your initiative and prioritize your job the way you feel that it's true. But for me, I believe it's better to assemble your team because you alone cannot define the scope. So it's when you assemble your team, all of you will then look at the the the, the, the scope together. Yeah, the, the work, the, the problem you people are trying to solve, and then the define the scope. So if it can be between you and the the some of the um uh, stakeholders will just sit down, but it will be very difficult for only you to to define the scope. So I'm I'm advising you not to do that alone. You must have okay. to define the scope with a group. If you are only if you are the only person, if it maybe it's your project, you can run it okay. the way you want it. But if it's an organization, there's no way you can just be doing everything on your own. So you have to uh, assemble the team. And then you people start working as a team. Okay, sir. And thank you. And then finally, uh, looking at the Jira software, I just want I just want you to confirm my assumption that every member of the team will see what everyone is working on, or are there some that are just meant for the project manager alone? Everyone will be seeing what each team member is working on at any time. You can access it at any every, time. Everybody is seeing what is everybody is working on. So that's why well, that's one thing in um, agile scrum. Transparency is one of the the key elements in a scrum. Everybody see what is everybody is doing. It's not um, hidden. But if uh, there are some things um, that can be uh, call it um, control um, access control. Maybe there is something they don't want you to do. Maybe if the um, the scrum master or the management have added um, testing in the board, and they don't want anybody to delete it or to close that testing or any of the board mm -hmm. through the access control, they will disable it that you can just work on it, but you can't close it. That's how to control, uh, make control through that area. Okay, so that's the, the duty of the that is the duty of Jira administrator to work on the access control, make sure uh, what you can see and work on and what you cannot do. Okay. So thank you very much. Please, uh, whoever is raising hand, because I'm seeing a lot of hands going up. Um, 
if you are uh, changing, you re, uh, re, uh, bring your hand down because I can't talk to you again. I brought it down. Okay. And uh, just be brief in your question so that the others are raising their, their hands and can attend to them before, before the time. Okay. Uh, it's hey, hello, sir. Um, okay, Isabella. Yes, good evening, sir. It's after Isabella Ruth. Okay. okay. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Okay, my question is, um, what qualifies one to become a school master and at what stage in the, does the school master come in, in the project? Yeah, what qualifies you to become a school master is to write Scrum master exam certification and pass it, and then okay. you become a scrum master. Okay. So you, you can be doing a scrum job, you can understand like you, what I've, I've taught you people, you have learned some aspect of scrum, you can even be doing, but you are not a scrum master because you are not qualified. So for you to act as to be a scrum master, to be called a scrum master, like me, I've um, written the exam, pass the exam, I can act as a scrum master because I have the certification and my certificate does not expire. So I'll become a scrum master till I die. Okay, then what is, at what stage of the project does the scrum master come in? The scrum master start from the beginning because in short, he's the person that organizing the whole thing in the, in the JIRA. Okay. So he, he comes in from the one. He's the person that organizes Scrum. He, that's why he call him Scrum Master. He's the person that uh, um, put the house in order and start bringing everybody in. So he's, that's why he call him the Scrum Master. If anybody having a problem, they call his attention. You see what, when I was having issues with uh, defining the scope, I raised the yes. flag, I raised the flag and Scrum Master came immediately and they rescued me, brought the attention of the stakeholder, and I, I did my, my, my this thing and moved on. Okay, so does it mean that uh, the um, school master can become, can be the, the manager at the same time, or are they different persons? Scrum, there is no project manager in Scrum. Okay. When you start project, when you start Scrum, the role of a, a project manager we, we, a project manager can you can have a project manager in the company where everybody's good, but within the scrum process, okay. there is no project manager. If you're a scrum, if you're a project manager and you want to work within the scrum, then you can be called scrum master. Okay. So that's how it, it, it happens. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So um roots. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much. I think yeah. you've answered a bit of the question. I wanted to confirm, um, what, what, uh, does each team member, when each team member reports their progress on the tax board, is the scrum master that um, that uh, um, adds, uh, once their progress has been reported, he, he adds the progress to the uh, done, uh, um, that's done column that you showed us. The scrum no. master is one that, is not the scrum master, is the tester. Yeah, once the job, once you, you finish, the scrum master is to, to make sure you don't have a problem. You call a scrum master to attention to make sure that it, if you're having a problem. So if you are not moving, you are, if you are stuck in your job for some time, which is not supposed to be, the scrum master will ask you a question. What are you, or why are you stuck? Or you shouldn't even allow the scrum master to call you. You should know when you're having a problem, you call the attention of the scrum master. But it's not the scrum master you, that will say when the job is done. The job will be done when you meet your job needs um, um, the car acceptance criteria, which you define uh, yeah, during the, um, when you are planning the, the, the user stories. Every user story have, have got um, acceptance criteria. Once the user story meets, uh, reaches, meets the acceptance criteria, it will automatically uh, be considered as you know, done after the testing. So when they are testing a user story, 
they use acceptance criteria as a benchmark to test it. So that is it. Once he reaches, he passes the acceptance criteria, he moves to done. And is the tester, you can be a tester or you can have a tester in a big project or the, the business analyst can be the tester, you know, doing the job. So it's not the scrum master or it can be the scrum master. If, if the, the scrum master is uh, working on a, a hybrid role, maybe working as a scrum master, as a business analyst, or even as a, as a developer. So, okay, thank uh, you. Graham. Okay, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Taking a cue from um, Ruth's um, question, which you've answered, I just want to be clear. Is it that as when, once the assignee finishes the project or the job that has been assigned to her, the assignee moves the card to the tester. When after testing, the, the tester moves it to finished. Is that how the process works? Yes. Okay, sir. Then secondly, to be a scrum master, is there a number of years you have to have practiced? Is there any other professional training you need to undergo before you can proceed to writing the exam and qualifying as a school master? There's no number of years. It's all about how competent you are. If you have stayed 100 years as a project manager and you don't know what you are doing, you are not going to pass. But if you have started the ESD and go through it and done your training, read everything that's supposed to read, and book the exam and go for the exam and, and write the exam and pass the exam, you get your certificate immediately. Okay. Are there, are there certain bodies that are recognized or that are preferred um, for someone to be a school master? Is there a certain um, organization yeah, yeah, that is more preferred yeah, we than have, the other? We have, we have, they're all they're all good, you know. Okay. But in um, you have um, Scrum Alliance, uh, which you can go there and uh, practice, and uh, they will help you write exams. You go to uh, their center and write exam and pass. And we have um, Scrum.org, where you can do your everything online. You can write the exam online, even in your, I think in your house. As long as, but it's not a, it's not that so easy, because it's a time based this thing. You just log in, write it online. If you pass, they give you this thing. So that's how it's done. You, if you want to do it, you can go to scrum.org and go through it and register and write your certification. Okay, uh, but that not the main thing. The main thing is to understand these processes, because. Okay. Uh, they are not going to be looking at your in the industry. It's not um, it's not a certification based industry. It's a competent based industry. Uh, they never asked me about my Scrum um, certification. What well, they asked me, what else can you do? So uh, okay. let us not be dwelling on how to get a certificate. Dwell okay. on how to know the this get the skills, know how to do it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Olufunke. Uh, Olufunke, okay, if you don't want, uh, if you are. Okay. I'm listening. Hello. Good evening, sir. Yes, I say carry on. Hello. I can't. I what said carry on. I can't hear you very well. I don't know if you can hear me, sir. Oh, okay. Carry on. I said carry on. Oh. Okay. I said I wanted to ask if one cannot be. A project manager without being a scrum master you can be a project manager without being a scrum master it's quite possible like what we are doing now we are planning to become a project manager you know as a matter of fact you are already a junior project manager by the amount of skills have impacted on you guys 
So that is it. You're already a project manager. So you don't need to be a scrum master in order to be a project manager. But it's good to have a, to, to be a scrum master or have scrum experience, scrum knowledge. So that's it. Because uh, most of the things they are doing now is uh, in agile methodology is going to be on scrum environment. So. So um, at this point, um, I'll call it um, 